The big thing that I want to illustrate here with the goblet squat is how to get the weight in position. So it's not enough just to have the weight out in front of you. You can see that if you just reach the weight out in front, nothing really happens to my rib cage or my center of mass. But if I think about pushing the elbows forward to get the weight in position, that'll help to shift the rib cage back, which will shift me back onto the heels and allow me to stack the head, thorax, and pelvis much more efficiently. From here, we wanna just drop straight down. We wanna avoid the hips shooting back. I wanna see that the knees travel forward while the heels stay on the ground. You also wanna avoid that move I just showed there where you're just kinda of hanging out on your back at the top. You wanna to stay active at the top. You should feel a lot of abs, you should feel your glutes. Everything should be on when you stay at the top. I would highly recommend using a heel lift, which I will indicate in your program if I want you to do that. Most people are gonna start with the heel lift. It's just gonna make it that much easier to shift back and feel that the weight is on the right position on the foot and then help you to stack, again, the head, the thorax, and the pelvis. If we look from the front in a second here, we want to see that the tibias and the femurs stay relatively lined up. The more narrow of a stance, generally speaking, the better and the easier it will be to keep everything lined up. As soon as you start to bring your feet out really wide and turn the toes out, it makes it very difficult to keep everything lined up. So for the goblet squat, just based off of where the weight is, it should be relatively easy to do, but certainly not easy as you can tell here.